Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do a lighting setup or basically just how to better light your, your scene or whatever you're working on. If you're uh, new to Blender and uh, trying to understand how to do, uh, how to do a, good light, a good lighting setup, uh, this is the tutorial for you. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see here, we have your standard you know, layout as soon as you create a new uh, general composition in Blender. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select everything and delete it. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And okay, so we have our lovely plane here. I'm going to hit S to scale, scale it out really big. And then I'm going to go up here to my scene collection and I've got my plane right here. I'm going to go up to our filter and I'm going to turn on this select tool right here, this little arrow right here. Um, and basically what's going to allow me to do is to make it to where I cannot select it. So no matter what I can, what I try to do, I try to left click on it, I can't select it. And uh, we're going to add a few random objects to our scene. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Mesh, go to Cube. Okay, we got a wonderful little cube here. Going to hit G and uh, move it up. I'm going to hit Z to move it along the Z axis. And I'm just going to basically move it up to where it's kind of resting on the plane. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to hit G, move it to the, on, and I'm sorry, going to hit G and then X to move it along the X axis and then hit G, Y, and move it on the Y axis. Okay, beautiful. We've got a cube. I'm going to hit Shift A again, go to Mesh. Going to go to uh, UV Sphere. Great, we got a UV Sphere. Going to hit S to scale and then G, move it up a bit. Okay, kind of panning around here, scale it down a bit. Looks like, kind of looks like it's resting on the plane. I'm uh, going to hit G, Y axis, move it around, hit G, X axis, make sure it's just, just kind of look like it's butting up against the cube here. I'm just basically, this is, you don't necessarily have to do this, this is just basically me setting up a basic scene really quick. Um, I'm going to select my sphere, hit uh, right click, and shade smooth, so our sphere is nice and round and smooth. I'm going to add one more object, and I hit shift A, go to mesh. And I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna add we're gonna add a torus. Um, and really quickly, I'm gonna just um, kind of make the torus a little more add a little bit more detail to it. Um, okay, let's see. We got 48 uh, segments, so I'm gonna set it to. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to 100. And then on minor segments, I'm gonna set that to 50. Okay, so we have a nice smooth torus right here. Gonna um, scale it up a bit, move it out, G, scale it down, make it a little smaller, okay, so now that's done, we have some random objects and everything, you guys can add whatever random objects you want, or if you maybe already has, have a scene with like a character or something, that's fine, I just wanted to put in something really quick that just anybody could just very quickly put together in their scene. So now let's go back up to our scene, scene collection and let's make sure that we can't select any of these objects. Okay, now we are ready to add some light sources. But before we do that, right now we are in solid mode as far as our viewport shading goes. We're gonna go over here to display render preview. And there are no lights, somebody turned off the lights. Okay, we need to turn on some lights. Okay, don't worry. Okay, hit Shift A, gonna bring up, instead of going to mesh, we're gonna go to light. And we're going to go to area. Okay, we just added a light area. Hit G, Z, move it up. And as you can see, we've already got some light going here. What we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, G and Y to move this, this light out a bit. Hit G and then X, move along the X axis. And we're going to rotate this light upward a bit. We're going to hit R and X to rotate along the Z, around the, along the X axis. And then we're going to hit R and Z to rotate it along the Z axis. So now we've got our light pointing at our objects. You can barely see them. Don't worry, we'll be able to see them here in a minute. Um, okay, so over here, over to our uh, tools over here, we're gonna go to Object Data Properties, turn on the light bulb, or I'm sorry, click on the light bulb here. And we're gonna set our power to 100. See how that looks? Great, we got some light. We can see our objects. Um, one thing, if you have any skills or experience in photography or are planning on picking up photography at any time, that will greatly help you with uh, setting up lighting scenes in uh, within Blender. Um, okay, we're going to adjust this light just a little bit more. Hit G, 
move along the x-axis. We're going to hit R, rotate, and then Z along the z-axis, rotating along the z-axis just to move this around a bit more. And we're actually going to turn this light up just a bit more. So we're going to set the power to 200. And we're going to set our color. I want to just give it just kind of a kind of a yellowish tint to it, not too much. OK, so we've got a light. And on our light properties, I want to go to our shadows over here. Click this little arrow. I'm going to turn on contact shadows. What that does, that just kind of smooths out the lights, the shadows a bit more. Um, as you can see here, we've got kind of a little pixelation or anything over here. Um, don't worry, we're going to fix that here in a minute. I just want to add a couple more lights. I'm going to select this light right here. I'm going to hit Shift D and then G to move it. We're going to hit X to move it along the X axis. And we're going to hit R to rotate along the Z axis by hitting Z. OK, so we have a two light set up, although this one over here, I'm going to change its uh, um, power down to 100. And I'm going to change it to a little bit of a bluish tint. So as you can see, we have, you know, we have just kind of some nice uh, lighting and, you know, light, light coloring and everything, a little variation. Um, and then we're going to add one more light. Select this light right here that we just uh, we just created, or I'm sorry, we duplicated. Going to hit Shift D to duplicate, hit G, and then move it along the Y axis. We're going to rotate Z axis, rotate around. Going to move it up, hit G and Z to move it up along the Z axis. And then this one is going to be really bright. This is going to be a nice little backlight. And uh, OK, so I turn the power up to 500, as you can see. If we go to color, let's drag it down to purple. Actually, no, no, I got it. Let's go, let's go with the green, kind of a greenish backlight. So as you can see, we've got, we've got some nice lighting here. Now I'm going to go over to render properties, select that. And I'm going to turn on some settings. You may want to uh, kind of see how your computer reacts to this because um, some lower end computers may or may not uh, take too kindly to uh, some of these settings. Just um, just kind of try to go with the flow or, you know, if you want to push your machine, more power to you. Okay, we're going to turn on ambient occlusion, going to turn on bloom, going to turn on screen space reflections. Uh, motion blur, I, I just turned that on just anyways because I use a, it, it's good for animation, but we're not doing any animation in the tutorial. Um, we're going to click these down arrows because uh, there's some settings here that I'm going to turn on. Um, let's see, depth of field, high quality, uh, jitter camera is going to turn that on just for the heck of it. Um, scene space reflections, we're going to turn on refraction, uh, motion blur, I'll leave that as is. Volume metrics on a tile size, my understanding is that um, the more powerful system you have, the lower you can set this to. So I'm going to set mine to two pixels. Um, and then I'm going to turn on volumetric shadows, performance, uh, I'm going to turn on high quality normals, uh, shadows, I'm going to set my cube size up all the way to uh, 4096, and then uh, cascade size, also going to set that up high. So now as you can see, we have some nice, nice shadows here and everything. I'm going to actually, I'm going to um, turn my torus on to where I can select it because I want to set it to smooth shading. Um, again, I mean, if you select it and then right click, you can do smooth shading. And um, as you can see, we have kind of a nicely lit scene. Um, I want to make my shadows a little darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to our world properties and then color. I'm going to set that all the way down to dark. And uh, let's see, turn off the torus to where you can't, well, you can't select it. Just keep, make sure, you, make sure you leave it visible. And then we're going to go to our plane, turn it back on, turn the selection mode back onto it. I'm going to select it and okay, make sure we have the plane selected. Going to hit S to scale. And let's just make this plane really big. And we're going to set our camera up. Let's see, uh, turn off the selection mode on the uh, the plane. So OK, only thing we can select now right, right now are our lights. Um, let's actually, let's go ahead and turn the selection on those off. So basically, I can't select anything in our scene because we're going to add a camera. So we're going to do, we're going to do Shift A. And we're going to go down to camera. And uh, the camera automatically drops into the middle of the composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to view and I am going to go to align view and I'm going to align active camera to view. And what that did was that automatically brought the camera up to where I have my view currently set. Um, there are multiple ways to control the camera and I'm going to show you a few here really quickly. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to our object data properties, similar to like we did with the, with the light source. The only difference is, is that it now it is set for camera properties. So we're going to click on it. 
and I'm going to set our focal length to 24 millimeters. Again, if you have experience in photography, um, this is where those skills kind of apply. Um, I set to 24 millimeters, which is very similar to using a 24 millimeter lens. Um, we went basically we just went from a 50 millimeter lens to a 24 millimeter lens, and um, which basically adds you know makes a much wider uh, um, view or point of view uh, with the with the camera. So okay, our camera is selected as you can see by this orange line. We're looking basically looking through the camera right now. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I want to align this, but I want to align it manually. I mean, you could you could um, let's see if you uh, middle mouse deselect out of here. You can move your camera around just like any other object. Hit G, move it around, move it along the Z axis, the X axis, or the Y axis, and everything. Um, but I like to have a little bit more control. So the way we snap back to our camera, back to where it was currently set, is we go over here to our little camera icon and uh, we toggle the camera view. So let's click on that. Bam, we're right back to our camera. Okay, so um, to control the camera in a more, just kind of a more, um, like as if you're positioning yourself with your own hands, we go up to view and we go to navigation and we go to walk navigation. And so now we can pan our camera around with the mouse by just, you know, I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just moving the, the mouse around freely. And if you hit W, A, S, or D, it pans it around, just like if you were playing like a first person shooter game or like a flight simulator of some sort. And uh, you can even hit Q and E, Q goes down, E goes upward. And this just basically gives you a lot of control of, you know, panning around your objects and your scene. So I'm just going to set this um, like, like this. I'm just kind of get a isometric perspective here. I'm going to left click on my mouse and that basically sets the camera in place. Now if we hit F12, we have a nice little render. One more thing I'd like to do with this, uh, with this scene setup. Um, if you guys uh, want to keep watching and um, hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys will get, get something out of this as well. Um, we're going to mess with uh, some uh, materials and uh, shaders. So what we're going to do really quickly is I'm going to um, I'm going to middle mouse to get out of uh, my camera view mode, and uh, we need to turn some object back on. We're going to turn the camera off. I'm sorry. We're going to turn the uh, selection. Uh, we're going to disable the selection for the camera, and we're going to re-enable the selection for the cube, the sphere, and the torus, because um, we want to add some. Uh, actually, no. Let's go ahead and turn turn. Um, the uh, plane back on as well. So we're going to add some materials. So if you go down to this uh, little kind of beach ball looking uh, object down here and click on it, left click on it, um, we can add some materials. So we're going to go ahead with the uh, with the plane selected, we're going to hit new. And if you go down here, you see the base color, we're going to set our base color to let's say Let's set our base color to maybe, uh, yeah, let's go with a tan color. I have a light, kind of a light tan color. And um, there's different sorts of things we can do with this. Like if we, uh, if we turn our roughness down, notice that we get a reflection. And you can actually see our lights reflecting in it as well. It's pretty cool, huh? Um, so, I mean, furthermore, um, let's see, we're going to, Go ahead and uh, disable the selection mode on the plane. Just leave that as is. And uh, we're going to turn the cube on, although I noticed it's uh, not quite resting on the plane. So I'm going to hit G and Z just to kind of bring it all the way down to where it's really sitting on the plane there. And we're going to change the material for the cube. So again, we're going to add new. And we're just going to change this cube to blue color. And we're going to turn the roughness all the way up. So you notice that, like, I mean, there's the only thing that's reflecting off of it is uh, the only thing that's reflecting off of it is just the light, but we're not getting any glares or anything like that or any speculars, really. Um, the sphere. We're going to kind of do similar to what we did with the floor, but I'm going to, let's see, add a new material and go to our base color. We're going to set it to red and we're going to turn the roughness all the way down and we're going to turn the metallic up on it. So we get like a really rich, deep reflection in it. Like, I mean, you can see, you can see our torus, you can kind of see the cube reflecting off of it. So we got that. And then lastly, we're going to go to the torus 
and we're going to add another material for it. And let's see, what, what are we going to do with this? Uh, we've got blue, red. Let's, let's, let's just go RGB. Let's give it a, a nice greenish color. And for the Taurus, um, I think, I think yeah, we're just going to maybe kind of give it a more of a reflective feel to it. We're going to turn the roughness down a little bit, but not all the way. So I mean, as you can see, you know, we have differing levels of uh, materials here. And this is just a way to just, I mean, create base. I mean, you know, you can do texturing, you can, you can bring in JPEG textures or you can do texture painting and everything. Um, but this is just a good way to quickly set up a scene or something that you maybe need for maybe a background render or for like, if you're doing, if you're doing an illustration or something like that, and you just basically need to do a rough setup of something, um, you just, you have this at your disposal to do this. And I mean, I mean, this just took me like an extra three or four minutes to do this on top of the lighting, uh, the lighting tutorial. Um, and I think we're even kind of getting some reflected light off of this, off of this, this cube here. And uh, more than that, like if we select the cube and just do a quick, um, let's, let's turn on, hit tab to go into edit mode, hit three um, and uh, select the face, the top face of it and hit I to inset. Um, we can we can take this one face right here and uh, we're still in our materials menu. If we uh, hit the plus button to add another material and then assign, you notice that this particular face on the cube is different. Um, we can actually assign a different material to that face. So we're gonna create a new material. We're going to set it to, let's set it to yellow and let's, Let's make it metallic and uh, drag the roughness down. So as you can see, the cube looks like it has like a little glass window on it. Um, I'm sorry, let's turn off tab most drop edit mode. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is just something that comes in very helpful. Um, if you're just trying to do like a very quick render or something, or, or if you're just trying to do a simple little animation, um, I just, I mean, I just, I love this program. I love working with it and everything because there's so much you can do so very, very quickly and everything. And plus it's free. It's a free program. Remember that this program is free. Um, as far as I know, you are free to distribute your work. I mean, you're free to use it, you know, for freelance work and everything. Anyways, hope you guys found this part uh, helpful. And um, if you liked the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe and uh, maybe uh, share it if you get a chance. Um, and uh, I'll continue to work on uh, tutorials in the future. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching and um, have a great one.